All right, hello everybody. This is gonna be a tutorial on how to use snapshot replication on your Synology NAS. All right, so snapshot replication is a service that's only on BTRFS shares. That is Synology's proprietary file system. And it allows for files to be stored with basically deltas in between them. So say I take a snapshot of a file and then I update that file. Basically what the file system does is it says, here's the file, then here's the update to that file. Meaning that every single time you take a snapshot, you're not increasing the size of your file system unless you delete files because then the old snapshots still have to store that data somewhere. So snapshots allow you to go back to the way any file was on your system anytime you took a snapshot. And they've got a great utility for it. Basically, you can schedule how many snapshots you would like to take and how many you, you would like to keep. So for example, you could take a snapshot every hour, then keep three snapshots from that day, three from that week, four from the month, and five in that year. This basically ensures that you do not fill up your NAS with a ton of uh, snapshots, but you always have whatever you need. It's similar to the way that Time Machine works on a Mac. All right, so to actually set up snapshot replication, first you're going to have to have a BTRFS share. Otherwise, it's simply not going to work. So if you have a BTRFS share, we're going to go into Package Center. And then we're going to search for snapshot and just go ahead and install snapshot replication service. Yeah. All right. So now that it has installed, we're going to go ahead and open it. So the first time you open it, if you've got default settings, it's going to give you this warning that record file access time is enabled on your system. Basically, if you're using BTRFS and you really don't need last access times on your files, the snapshot would like you to disable it or at least make it happen less often. The reason for this is if it records every single time you access a file, that actually just adds more and more overhead to that snapshot because you're changing small things about the file every single time instead of never changing a file just because you open it. So that's just one thing you're going to want to do. Another thing to note about snapshots is that during file system defragmentation, they can get kind of broken. So if you've got a lot of snapshots and you defragment your file system, you're going to have an issue where all of a sudden, instead of taking up next to no data, your snapshots are going to be taking up significantly more data. I'm not talking like, the whole size, but it could be 10% of that snapshot. So you might want to disable file system defragmentation or do it less often. All right, so within snapshot replication, you can see we've got these options. We've got overview. It basically says how much of your stuff has a snapshot, has a scheduled snapshot, or has no snapshot. And it really helps you see what percentage of your data is safe. We're on my video tutorial server so I've only got 16 megs of data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go in, into snapshots and we're going to set up automatic snapshots. So first we're going to go ahead and select it. Then we're going to go into settings and create a snapshot schedule. You can choose how you would like to do it, how often you would like to do it, up to every five minutes. Then you can choose your retention, and this is where you can do advanced retention rules. Here's where you can say, I want 12 hourly backups, three daily backups, one weekly backup, zero monthly, and zero yearly. Basically what this means is, it'll take up to three hourly snapshots, and it will go through and actually make sure to space those out as much as possible. Then it'll take three daily snapshots, basically a snapshot from the past three days. But since there's already one from today, it'll only do today and the next two days. So this is an inclusive list. Then it'll do one weekly snapshot. So it'll take one from this week. 
This basically means that your data does not take up huge chunks on your NAS, and you can figure this however you would like to. All right, so now we're gonna do it. And so now it's got these scheduled snapshots. You can also do manual snapshots by going into snapshot and clicking take snapshot. And then just give it a description. And so now we've got a snapshot there. All right, so now that we've taken a snapshot of this for tutorial, let's go ahead and connect to it and see what it can do for us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect to it. All right, and we'll just put an empty text document in there. All right, I'll just add some random text in here so we can see what it does. And we'll save it directly into that snapshot folder. All right, so now we want to make sure we've always got a copy of that data. So let's go back into our finder and just do a manual snapshot real quick. All right, so it's processing. And now, boom, we've got a snapshot of that data. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we just go ahead and change that text file. Just anything to show it. All right, and so now you can see, boom, uh, we've changed the document. But let's go back and say, oh shoot, I did not actually want to change that. So we're just gonna go ahead and go into snapshots again. And now we're gonna look at our list. And so this is the one we want, it's after text. So let's go ahead and just browse it. Without even restoring this configuration, I can actually go ahead and check this out. So let's just go ahead and download it. And hey, this is our original text. So without even having to restore that file, we've now got a copy of it from whatever time we want. It's a lot like Apple's time machine, but in a lot of ways, a lot better. And really, that's all you need to know. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.